ברוך השם, you're a bad Jew. שלום. Kosha Dills, welcome to the podcast, bro. It's great to have you here. Uh, this is the Bad Jew podcast. We're here today to address the fact that you're not a bad Jew for being in your journey. How are you doing today, Rami? What's going on? Awesome. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Baruch Hashem. Yo, so I wanted to bring you on to this podcast because you just came out recently with Death Con 3. You directly attacked the source at the snake, at the head of the snake, <laughs> anti-Semitism as of late. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience of creating Death Con 3? Sure. So I was inspired to create it because I was originally not going to do it. I was kind of to respond in a loving manner. And then I just got really angry. Uh, I saw someone, you know, very, a very significant person in my life. She, she wrote something about it. And I was like, well, let me use that line. And... I was like, all right, I'm going to use this line. What was the line? Saw, uh, the yay or nay line. Yeah, yeah. it's a line of song, yay or nay. I'm a naysayer and a Maccabee. Yeah. And, from the dreidel to the grave, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also, that was also something else I borrowed from a comedian. And like, I would just kind of like, and there were so many people talking about it. And then I saw a picture of Kanye with Nick Cannon, who's like, you know, I'm on Wild and Out. So I was just like, I got to say something now because now it's just getting weird. So yeah. So to me, I was just like, you know, if I don't say something, it'll actually be weird for, for me that I didn't say anything. So right. I want to hear more about that in a second, but I want to challenge you. You've told your life story so many times in your life. I want to give you this new kind of challenge that we're giving everyone the same challenge on this podcast, the Bad Jew podcast. I want to hear your life story in four minutes starting now. Go for it. Cool. So I was born Rami Evanesh, Perth Amboy, New Jersey, to Israeli immigrant parents. Um, my parents held from Israel. They've been there since uh, since the beginning of uh, 48 when my grandfather went over there, fought in all the wars. So we, that's the kind of family I come from. Yeah. And um, my parents came to the U.S. in 76. I was the first one out of my brothers and my parents. You know, I was first one in America. The, uh, the first thing we were into was really soccer and uh, wrestling. Wrestling really defined who I was as a person, competitive spirit. Um, I wrestled from the age of eight to Division One Rutgers until the age of about 21, 20, 21. That was really imperative to get me into college. I was kind of a loner, started rapping about uh, ages uh, 16, 17. First time on stage was in New York, New York Regan Post Cafe 99. I started getting arrested for drugs. So probably around 18, 19, did time when I was 20 to 21. And I went back when I was 22 and then I got sober. And I just think that's a really important part for my, my story. Because people don't know, I've been sober over 18 years. So wow. everything you see me do that's crazy, antics and stuff, I've done it completely uh, sober, you know. Um, and uh, <laughs> what are we at, two, two and a half minutes? Yeah, we're at two and a half minutes. You're killing it right now. You're doing yeah, great. So, You're doing great. Nah. And um, a big thing, um, you know, I moved. Um, my big uh, infatuation when I first started rapping was, you know, going from um, – when, when I got sober, the only jobs I ever had was really – delivering pizza, selling drugs. And at the end, I sold cemetery plots door to door. I was a very dark guy. I went out to LA and um, I was in 2011 and just started my, my, my music career. First got its big hit in 2012. I had a Super Bowl commercial. I sort of lost myself, just, you know, just trying to pursue the dream. Came back to New York during the pandemic, lived in Israel for a short time. Um, I also speak Spanish too. So Spanish, Hebrew, English are my languages. And, you know, just very strong Jewish identity, more embodied like the Jewish gangster of like the Italian movies versus the Jewish guy from Aish. But from the story, my last name is Evan Aish. So, you know, I was connected with Aish and I uh, did a yeshiva in 07 for like a month. I was very like, I like hanging around the Jews. I consider myself too Jewish for the Jewish world and not Jewish enough for the other uh, other worlds, you know. So I'm like, I play this in between and that's why I'm the rapper now and Wild and Out. I've had some really viral moments and learned how to use uh, be pro-virus instead of anti-virus. And it's really helped me navigate this new world of, you know, being proud to be Jewish and just 
I don't know, being myself, being Rami and finding out how to be Rami in this midst of this character, Kosha Dills. And authentically, that's really competitive spirit. So that's why I'm up here and I love battling. So that's what I'm getting back to. And that's kind of part of the song that we're at today. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I've oh, yeah. talked lots of Jews along the way, Modest Yahoo, all the Jewish people to all the rap people. And I like to be the in-between kind of connecting these worlds. That's sort of my dream to connect this crowd and that crowd. And they're all at the same show. Hell yeah. That's all I got. Well, I love that. And dude, you did that with 42 seconds on the clock left. I'm going to go ahead and end that time right there. Yeah. You killed that four minute. I, I think what's so great about a four minute life story introduction of yourself is that mm -hmm. you reveal so much about yourself and there's like, there's actually a lot that you can throw in there and under pressure, you end up saying things that you don't typically say in other scenarios. So yeah, good on you coach. I appreciate dude, it. I like it, dude. I mean, that's what, that's what it's all about, dude. Pressure. Yeah. And, yeah. And I like to rise to the occasion. I'd rather, like I said, what's the agenda? Like, are we doing like a 90 minute pot? At least talking about anything or are we like getting to the point? No. What are we doing? And I don't think these things should go on forever. I agree. And speaking of getting to the point and speaking of rising to the occasion, how do you fight anti-Semitism? That's really why we're here. Here's the thing, Rami. Not all of us are rappers. You are. You get you put yourself out there in this unique way on this platform and you put a dent on them. So I want to hear, in your opinion, how do you fight anti-Semitism? Well, you don't fight anti-Semitism with making raps about anti-Semitism, really. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You fight if you're like an artist, you just have to be an amazing artist. Like that's the, the goal. Your goal as an artist should be like the best painter. If you're in battle rap, like yesterday I was in a rap battle and uh, like I knew the certain, I haven't done a rap battle since I was so young. Like I do it on TV, and but it's way shorter. It's like one, two, one, two, one, two. And you know they're what they're cutting stuff out, you know? Like I'm, I went for four or five minutes, I think. Um, and when I think about that, like you just use your things to your advantage. So, you know, sometimes it's okay to play to your stereotypes depending on the room, you know? And I, like a great thing that I've done in my career is tour. So I've been to every state in America, I've been to multiple countries, and I see the way people interact with Jews. And some pe people just don't know what is offensive and what's not. Give so, me an example. 2014. I was like, hey, you know, you got to, if you want to get that CD, you know, you got to buy it. And he goes, ah, oh, yeah, you're such a Jew. <laughs> he said that. And I thought to myself, man, that's so offensive. But also this guy loves me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you have to sort of, do you want him to love you? You know what I'm saying? Right. Or you want him to, because he really likes you. And he just, that's what he was just fucking around. We were just doing it. And, and, you know, you catch it and you're like, oh my God. You know, that's just the normal thing that's been embedded to society. So it's not his fault. Right. It's not my, you know what I mean? It's not his fault that that's what he knows. You know what I mean? It's not like he's like, oh, what's, you know, many Jewish people are things with money and stuff, you know? So, right. I do. so it didn't mean he didn't like my rapping. And, you know, I have this discussion with Or, Or Mash. She's a, her name's Or Mashiach. She's uh, the other girl on Wild and Out. She's Israeli. So she sort of plays this foreign girl. And I was like, how do we do this on the show? And we're sort of under the impression that our job is to make people laugh. And it's not about to tell people we're Jewish. It's to make people laugh. And then they find out, then they want to know stuff about us and they want to get to know us. But when you're a performer, your, your job is to entertain people. It's not really to educate people first. First, you have to be entertaining. If you're not entertaining, no one cares. Right. You know, because there's plenty of people with voices and they have a hundred followers and this, and they're like, how could you, you know, and this they discuss with their level but when you're at a certain level you're only you're supposed to keep rising up to other bigger levels so you have these bigger discussions right. and if you make a big enough impact you will get a bigger platform so my job is to get a bigger platform so it's not it's almost like you're like this Mossad agent and you're like back you're like behind this enemy line where you're like wow this is just you know i get the opportunity to play and people are like well let's just ask you because this is your thing you know right Right. Um, you know, I have like we were on a we're on a new pot we're on a new documentary in Hulu, which they reached out to me. It's me, Ruth Rockman, Nassim. It comes out in like hours, and oh uh, it's called yeah. "It All Falls Down." It's you guys can watch it on Hulu. Um, Go check it out. It's about it's about 
the Kanye stuff, and it's about all the derivatives of anti-blackness, anti-Jewishness, what it means to, be, it, all the things that were directly in there. And because I made a great piece of art, then now I have another platform to speak to people. And now I have this platform to speak to you. And then other people are going to look into things differently, you know? And I think, you know, you have to be creative in ways to keep discussions going. And sometimes it takes more than an Instagram post or a Facebook. Right. Absolutely, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's absolutely. Uh, I think that's, I think it's a great way to look at it. So what you're kind of saying is that you got to kind of balance out the microaggressions versus the macroaggressions and kind of know when it's the time to pull the trigger on when to say something like that. I, I guess I actually don't even know like when when is the right time. And here's the thing about me. I personally have had my running with anti-Semitism all my life. Anybody mm -hmm. who knows me really well knows that uh, my the, the the court case Volk for CSU Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. I'm the Volk in that case. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's my that's my uh, claim to fame in the Jewish world and the fight against anti-Semitism. But that's because like I was reached out by the Lawfare Project and I was uh, recruited to be a plaintiff in this trial where mm -hmm. we went and got back at San Francisco State for mm -hmm. the you know the, the just the just the back end bullshit that comes our way when they say oh you can't have a table or oh we're not going to uh, let the cops interfere with this case even though they're legally supposed to be interfering when something is happening at a certain point at a private event. So there's different things like that that come across. Okay, so that's the law. And then that's the rapper. But what if I'm like a YJP, like a young Jewish professional dealing with a, a real macroaggression that's harming us, right? Mm -hmm. Like what's the, what, what's the best way to do it? Is, is taking the social media the only thing I can do? Um, no, no. I think, you know, responding with goodness at a certain level. Like I think certain people are going to, be outside they're going to do a march i mean if you think about 2019 there was a march against anti-semitism in new york city after they had the attacks in jersey city and literally everybody marched except the people that were attacked honestly i mean the religious people that were, i don't think they showed up i mean in certain areas there's jews getting attacked all the time that are visible and in you know williamsburg and crown heights etc but many of them just you know do acts of kindness you know and they're like publicly so a big thing for me is i ran the marathon i raised money for holocaust survivors i saw that that was epic. People, a lot of people that were like i don't want to share the kanye stuff because you know everyone has their own personal brand and it's too aggressive and then, and then other people start fighting in the comments and which is very mean because maybe they're working with brands and stuff but they really like that and it was sort of all intertwined with the same thing because if you share it they'll still come to my page and that is just doing good stuff to the world so you don't actually have to there's no requirement there's no requirement to being jewish like you know what i mean I, I really feel like people need to understand if you sit this one out i guarantee you there'll be something in another month you know so right you know <laughs> right yeah you're not a bad Jew. So, and and trust me like a lot of people had real mostly jewish people I would say have a lot of opinions of how I responded from religious Jews saying, oh, with the defillin," or I know all the little points to hit to make sure my goal was to get that seen by everybody. And if I didn't do certain things, if I shot that in a field, it wouldn't have gotten the same response, you know, right. like and I'm very, I, I would say I'm quite skilled in learning how to make an impact. Right. Um, after trying and failing so many times. So it's like, you Ooh. know, you know, that, that that's a really good theme. Actually, I kind of like that. If you if you're going to approach activism and you're trying to build something that's going to create waves, you got to try and fail multiple times. I like that concept a lot. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, there's there's plenty of rallies where it's just Jewish people hanging out with Jewish people. And it's like a giant singles mm. event or something. Like that. <laughs> right. And, and it's like. Yo, it's nice and it's unity makes you feel good. But but when are we gonna have conversations with people that we disagree with? And right. people don't like that. I mean, we avoid that in our own personal relationships. Mm. So so when those fail, we don't like we don't learn how to shift it into like human and you can't cut off another group of people like you can, but like most of us can't. Like, especially me, I can't just be like, Oh, I'm only working with Jewish people, this and you know, like for me, I work in black art so i'm on a hip-hop show i'm on a black television show i'm on i work in hip-hop i mean so so for me 
it's integrated in my life. So I have to be a voice naturally for myself. And that, that's just a natural fit to me. I don't, I don't mind it. I enjoy it. And it's not like everything I do, but I ultimately just want to make great songs. I just want to make great content. Just so happens that this stuff drove me to make some different kind of stuff than I usually do. And I love it. I think it sparked, I, I, all publicity is good publicity. But I think something that you said that really, you know, kind of touched me is the idea of sitting across the aisle from people that, you know, don't agree with you and actually just showing up. I think that's really your message. Show up and get face to face in a civil way, by the way, because that's something that you also in insinuated is you got to got to show up in a civil way, in a respectful way, because you are representing your people. When yeah. you show up into fill in and you're and you're rapping about that. That's a clear representation of your people right there. Yeah. And you're showing that I, too, can play the game. I'm, I too am here to make waves. You want to make waves? Fine. I'll splash back, but I'm going to do it civilly. And I appreciate you saying that because I think Kanye kind of like knew what he was doing. So yeah. I also know what I was doing. I was going to, you have to teeter this line of a 50 to 51%. You don't want to go to the 49, 47. Mm. You kind of want to, I don't know. Just, I guess there's like that 51, 49, you know, this where, it's so close neck to neck with agreeing and disagreeing that next thing you know, a month later, they're still saying who did, you know, counting because it was so close. And and when I was making a song, I redid it and I redid it. And I'm like, let me be meaner. Let me be disrespectful here. Let me let me put in this positivity. Let me also call out, you know, the stuff you did with George Floyd. And yeah, because. You know, a big a big theory was, you know, people should apologize to everyone and Kanye should apologize to this group and that group. And I don't know, I'd rather go against, you know, David versus Goliath versus David versus Evan or David versus uh, Michael. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think yeah. that is ultimately, uh, you shouldn't be penalized for sitting, for shooting up. But many of the people who have, you know, when you deal fighting anti-Semitism in general, is most people will never do the face to face or they'll never do the voice to voice they'll just do text to text right so just levels a levels that if if it's fine for you like during the um i'm just doing what i know i can do that other people want to do but can't you said something super interesting earlier was that you, you pointed out in your in deathcon 3 the idea of you know Acknowledging the fact that Ye also owes apologies to other communities. So now mm -hmm. you're actually just using logic to talk about the fact that he has done harmful things to other minority groups, including his own. Yeah. Have you heard what have you heard from other groups outside of the Jewish community about your song? Isn't it funny that he's going to apologize to them before he apologizes to us? Like the perception, honestly, a big perception by other communities is that. Jews will force you to apologize or we're called some, I think Dr. Umar called us the untouchables, which I thought was funny. You know, the perception is that we're just, we, we cry out anti-Semitism over everything. And the difference is honestly to learn when you learn about another community that suffers from like certain things, like I think the, you know, the new situation with Kyrie of forcing someone, giving someone a list or, you know, that's very similar. That's one of their tropes, right? It's like a slavery trope. While making a list of our names is a trope, why is you to really the most common thing we should do is learn more about who we are, you know, because a lot of people don't know anything about really being Jewish. Like they've never really, you know what I'm saying? They face maybe some online anti-Semitism, but but to really experience it and then people distance you, like I'm on a black television show and the guy that runs the show was canceled and now he's with, you know, Jonathan Greenblatt for the ADL and but does the ADL really speak for me? I like I know I know who I as long as I know who I am, then I speak for myself. And I think it's the most important for, for a Jewish person or any yeah. group, any group of people, right? But specifically this, right? To learn that, like, why are lists of Jewish names, why is that a trope? Because if you look at a list of a Jewish name in the Holocaust, you can't pick out, you could pick out, hmm, you don't know if someone is black or or, but I guarantee you know someone who's Jewish, right? Because Greenberg. Stein, um, stereotypical last Stein. name. Right? Yeah, the last name. But could you tell whether they're Sephardic Jew? Uh, you can't. You know what I'm right. saying? I bet you didn't know this guy. Um, Schneider. Did you think Schneider was Yemenite? You probably didn't. You thought right. Schneider was from Poland, but Schneider is actually, 
you know, or this Schneider's from Morocco and uh, that's African. So they're, oh, so you're going to open up a lot of eyes and then you're getting a chance to educate. But when you make more creative content, whether you're making a TikTok or an Instagram or, you know, it, it empowers people. And just like when a lot of people like the work that you make, other people like the work that they hate. So people mm. make negative comments, they're getting all these likes and they're encouraged to make more negative comments because <laughs> they're getting likes. Right. And what I experience. And I'll, I'll leave you with this is that like there were people that were reporting the news three times. And I experienced this at a, at a terrorist attack. I went to a terrorist attack in Harnof in 2014 where they killed four rabbis and they have six cameras around the same place, but they're all reporting the same news differently with different wording. So in my experience, <laughs> the, the one big viral thing happened was that the Jews have responded to Kanye West. And it was a picture of me, my camera guy, it was like a raw video. Then it was a group of Jewish people have gathered, which wasn't as bad, I think. And then I had to coach people that, and these people had 50 million followers, right? And they're like, well, what should the caption be? I said, the caption should be a Jewish rapper has responded. If that's what you want to do, Jewish rapper has responded to Kanye West. So at least I take it off the Jews. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's like, <laughs> yeah. A, most Jewish people don't want me to do this because they're like, I'm afraid. But you have to literally coach them. And the thing is, when we deal with anti-Semitism, wording is very important. And also when you're sticking up for yourself, wording is very important. So the best way, honestly, to fight it is just by doing good things because then all you can do is be positive. Like I like that. You have to fight. You know what I mean? Are you raising yeah. money for a good cause? Raise money to bring people together. And no one's going to say anything about doing doing sadaka work and charity work. and Right. I guess it's just a good thing, you know? So I got one more quick question for you. This might, I might open up a can of worms by asking this question. Cancel culture has hit Kanye West because of this, you know, Adidas just dropped uh, Kanye West for, for his, for his actions and everything. Do you agree with the actions of canceling him and harming his uh, financial status in that, in that capacity? Or is there a different way to go about this from a corporate standpoint? Well, I'm not a corporate person. I'm Fair a person enough. of like the people, you know what I mean? So but I don't think cancel culture is cool, but I do know that if I say something really messed up, like people won't want to work with me. That's just a basic thing. I think like Loshan Hara, right? Is that like, you know, you speak oh, yeah. out of the tongue and from yeah. and how you're talking smack. Yeah, you know, we're just going to pass on working with you. And right. It's not our fault that you're the biggest person in the world. Like you just have more of a, res if I have more of a responsibility with, a hundred some thousand followers, you know what I'm saying? Right. Imagine if you have, you know, a hundred million, right? When you have a percentage of the world that knows who you are, you have a different duty. You know what I mean? I don't have the luxury of having such a problem that everyone stopped working with me and I still have hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> so, right. it's, so it's like, uh, I don't, I don't think people should be canceled forever because also no one is canceled forever. That's, that's a, because people, we all grow, you know? So, but I do know some of the best relationships come from tough times. Oh, well said, well said. You know, I mean, I mean, some of, you have a big fight, you have a, a breakup, you have a, you have a, I don't know, just like everything goes wrong and all you can do is go up from there. Like it can't really get worse. So yeah, times when you're at the bottom, you have to come up, you know? Yeah, if you're ever listening to this podcast, I guess all I have to say personally is that I hope that in these tough times that you learn to establish a relationship with the Jewish community just because of the fact that I, I think you honestly didn't know what you were saying. I think you said a lot of things knowing that it got you attention and it was kind of shot irrationally like a shotgun, not really having any general direction. And I forgive you to some capacity for what you said. And I hope that you can find it in your heart to grow from this experience and to seek out new opportunities with the community. Cause I think you'll find that we're not what you think we are, that we're very much different. As a matter of fact, the reason why this podcast exists, the bad Jew podcast is to break those stereotypes and start educating people on what Jews really are. Just want you to know that. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Speak to it, man. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's yeah. a cool name for a podcast. You know, I always thought I was, uh, I know a lot of people say they're bad Jews, but um, I don't know. I'm pretty bad too sometimes, but uh, but I'm very, uh, you know, I'll tell you this actually. My first time I met Madis Yahoo, he told me this thing and I tell him this story a lot and he's like, I'm going to study with you. And, and then I, I performed with him for the first time. It's like 2004. And he goes, you know, if you eat a cheeseburger, you know, it's not kosher. 
but you take the energy from a cheeseburger and you use it to do kosher stuff. So it sort of balances you out. So you take you get all the energy from the cheeseburger and then you go across the street and give somebody $5, gives like a homeless guy five bucks. And then, you know, you're sort of like, wow, you see how, you know, you flipped it on them. Um, yeah. think, you know, I would love for Kanye to make a comeback. I mean, I listen to a lot of Kanye's music. I would love Kyrie to make a comeback and all the, all those people, you know, yeah. um, Current people, we don't want to come back <laughs> just in general. But, um, <laughs> but in general, as a society, we should. I, I don't wish mal malice on anybody, to be honest. I would love for everybody to come together. Yeah. Um, and this, that's my that's my attitude, though, in life, because I really have no choice anyway. I mean, they're going to come back, honestly, regardless with or without me. But, you know, I'm hopefully like if I can make an impact with, with the stuff that I'm making, then then that's my my job is done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once I put the art out there, if it's good, people will share it and they'll they'll vibe with the message, whether it's having a good time, a bad time, a love song, uh, a song about history, or a song addressing an issue, you know. And that's like that's like the job of the creative. And if you're not creative, you're lying to yourself. You are creative. You might just you know put something out there, post something. I don't know. And that's like a start. And then people will invite you to real things in real life. And that's yeah. that's what's honestly been happening to me. So. I love that. I love that. So I think to sum everything up that we just spoke about, because I know you got to go soon, Kosha. Mm -hmm. The idea is you got to show up. You got to be present. But you also got to be civil. You also got to be able to use your words. And you also got to be able to put positivity out there. In yeah. these tough times, we got to remember that bridging the gap is really where how we fight anti-Semitism here in this world. And I think that by reaching out to someone like Ye directly and showing that we're not afraid to establish a relationship with him, it gives the opportunity to educate, gives the opportunity to grow from that experience. So Rami, Kosha Dills, I want to thank you again for being on this podcast. The Bad Jew podcast is incredibly grateful. For all you bad Jews listening, thanks for, thanks for watching. Be sure to check us out on YouTube and be sure to check out our socials in the show notes of this episode. And we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. See you guys next time. Bad Jews. Shalom. <laughs>